loves chocolate. Today, we're gonna show you some of our favorite whole food plant-based desserts. Mm, that's good. Wow, yeah. Some people don't like warm fruit. I feel sad for those people. I like go pudding, but better than pudding. I love it. Really you could do it as a dessert. You could do it as an after school snack. This is like my new favorite cookie. This tastes exactly like the pudding from my childhood. Good kitchen. This is what you get when you when you watch this channel. Greetings and welcome to, or welcome back to PB with Jay. Here on the channel, we focused on all things plant-based goodness. And due to popular demand, I'm putting together a compilation video of some of our family's favorite dessert recipes that we have come across from doing the cookbook reviews we have done here on the channel. Everything from cookies to pudding, cobblers, cakes, and even homemade Butterfingers. I just had like an experience. The names of all of the books from the recipes will be listed in a little Chiron at the bottom of the screen so that you can know which books they are in case you're interested in getting them yourselves. And if you are interested in getting any of these books, please use the links in the description down below because it helps us out here on the channel. If you enjoyed this dessert compilation video and you want a part two, let us know in the comments down below because we've got a whole whack of these things we can put into another one. And if you want a different kind of compilation from our cookbook review series, let me know and I can potentially make that happen for you as well. But before we get into the compilation, I'd love to say hello to some of the people who've said hello to us in the comments down below. Julie from Honolulu, Hawaii. Vicky from Blackpool in the Northwest of England. Michelle from Idaho. Virginia from the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania. Chris G from Buffalo, New York. Diane from Casa Grande, Arizona. Quinlan and Chloe from Missouri. Beth from England. Sarah from Hudson Valley, New York. And Peggy from, I don't actually know where Peggy's from, but I do know she is from our Mighty Network. What's our Mighty Network, you ask? Well, it is a group of like-minded individuals. It's like PB with J 2.0. It's kind of like Patreon, but not. We have got message boards. You get early access to these videos. You have members only live streams and the occasional giveaway. And I'm starting to throw up some recipes in there as well. Lots of conversations, lots of like-minded individuals. Nobody yucks anyone's yum. It's a great place to be. And you can be there along with us for the price of a crappy cup of coffee a month. You don't have to drink that. Thank you. And now to some of my family's favorite desserts. For our dessert tonight, I'm gonna make this super simple banana pudding. So even though this is super simple and it comes together very quickly, uh, Sam tells you that you should make it three hours in advance or overnight. So super simple in advance. What am I gonna change? White sugar is gonna become corn sugar? Corn sugar, corn, coconut sugar. There we go. I've had my coffee. I, I don't have any excuse for my, my silly words. So white sugar is gonna become coconut sugar. That might affect the color. I'm gonna be okay with that. Corn starch stay the same. My plant milk, I'm gonna use oat. I'm gonna make a new batch in the plenty milk, which makes exactly two cups, which is what we need. Salt, turmeric, all good. So, hmm, she has you whisk in vegan butter at the end. I know we stick to whole food plant-based around here and I try to show you swaps. I was racking my brain with what to swap for this. Because I think it's purely for that fatty flavor, I think I'm gonna include it. I have aquafaba, it's not gonna do what this is doing. It wants a little fattiness. I'm gonna allow it. If you have any thoughts on what would you would put in there for a whole food plant-based substitute as opposed to the butter, let me know because I'm, I'm just gonna kind of give in in this case because it's dessert. And it sticks close to the recipe too. So really the only thing I'm gonna swap out here is the white sugar for corn. I keep on saying corn because there's corn starch in this recipe too. <laughs> anyway, you, uh, you mix it all together, pour it into some ramekins. Mm. Ooh, that's got a nice flavor. It's not too sweet. I, I, and I gotta say, as much as I hate to admit it, that you know, the little bit of vegan butter adds this nice little fattiness to it. It's gonna add 50 calories to each serving. So, you know, it's a treat. All right, now we're gonna cool those, although it's steamy. I kinda wanna let it stop steaming before I put it in the fridge, otherwise I'm gonna get like a little water skim on top of it. So we'll let that cool, put it in the fridge. Then later on, we'll put it into individual, uh, 
little things. Eventually. So this is why you put the pudding in individual cups in the fridge, because otherwise it solidifies together. And then when you put it in cups, it looks god awful. I'm Get sure out. it's gonna taste Can good. I try a little bit? Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm gonna try to cream this up again, but I don't know how well I'm gonna do. Oh, I know what you can do. What? You could use like the emergent blender. That would creamify it. Creamify it? Creamify it. I don't know if that'll work. What do you think? Try it. What? No I idea is a bad more... idea. That looks horrible right now. <laughs> It's like pudding. It's good, it's sweet, it's creamy. It's not that much banana y. Well, the pudding itself isn't banana. Oh. But oh. have it with banana. Have it, have it. You know, Ooh. see how I put banana on top? Right, Maybe right, put that, that in a spoon and eat it. <laughs> Of course, now it's gonna taste like bananas because I ate it with bananas. Well, that's the point. But it's good. What do, what do you rate it? An S plus. Mmm. All right, pudding said. Good sweet, maybe a little bit, a little, little bit more sweet. I would say. Could be a little sweeter. The banana on its own is good. Tastes like banana. Ooh, pretty good. What is it? What's your rating? Mm, bland. It's not bland. What is it? I give it an A. I have Butterfingers today. Apparently. It's so good. I don't know how you did that. It tastes like real pudding. Yeah, it does. From my childhood. Yeah, it tastes like jello pudding. Oh, yes. So is that like a full on S then? Yeah. All right. Make it again. Oh man, this tastes exactly like the pudding from my childhood. Oh wow. It did call for a little vegan butter and I couldn't think of a swap so I actually put it in. But it was only like two tablespoons. Good so kitten. I figured it was worth it. Good kitten. It's so good. Good kitten. Maybe I'll work on a, a swap without the butter. Good this is kitten. delicious. Good kitten. I did good. This is an S. S all the way. I'm gonna put it on the phone and be better. S plus. S plus is Annie. So her recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of margarine. So that I could probably put a little more tofu in and also some applesauce. Go through a cup and a quarter of sugar. I'm gonna half, I'm gonna put that. A that. cup and a quarter of sugar? How many cookies does it make? 24. I'm gonna half it. No, I'm gonna put it on a like half a cup. I had to run an errand, so I left my wife to scoop and bake the cookies. She said she would take video. She did not. Well, I think they're gonna be chewy. <laughs> but they are definitely browned on the bottom, so I wouldn't want to keep them in longer. I think it's a nice size. It's not too big. You can eat 10 of them at once. I agree. And the cookie dough is really tasty. What? Well, I said it makes 24, so there's a little left over, so I just ate that, obviously. What do we think of the cookies? That was so quick. There's no anticipation. The blonde kid likes the treasure. So one for treasure. Why? I like the chocolate chips in it. He liked the pre-made chocolate chips that I added to the cookie. <laughs> Thanks. I think we could have made this without the recipe. Yeah. But they were tasting good. Try yeah, it. I think it's, I mean, the one thing I haven't done is use tofu in a cookie yeah. recipe. So, we thought about it. Yeah, we haven't actually done it. So, but I agree that it, it feels like it's something we'd make or have made potentially. Annie? True. Sure. Me too. I like it. It's simple. Sure. I like the tofu, and I think I'm gonna steal that and use that in more like cookie recipes where I need oil. Treasure. Oh my Treasure. goodness. I think. Do I think we liked it? Treasure. 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 Do, you want, do you want them? It's a kitchen party. Everyone's here. Everyone's gonna help me make dessert. No. Oh, I'm making homemade butterfingers. I love Butterfingers. It was like one of my favorite chocolate bars. So if I can find a healthier version of that, I will be a happy man. What are you, Bart Simpson? For this, this seems simple enough. I gotta grind some cornflakes up. And then mix it together with some peanut butter, maple syrup, pinch of salt. So if you're like me and you have peanut butter that's been in the fridge and it's kind of solidified natural peanut butter, uh, and it's hard to stir. My recommendation is to put it in the microwave for uh, 
15, 30 seconds. Just long enough to make it stirrable again. It would just be easier. Otherwise you're just, you're, you're, you're having an unpleasant time. You wanna have a good time when you're cooking. If you don't microwave it, you're gonna have a bad time. Here's a pet peeve I have with some recipes. So it says it makes 12, fair, that's great to know. But then when form, it says form into little bars and add to a baking sheet. That doesn't, like that's, does that frustrate you when you see stuff like that? What? Like when it says it makes 12, but it says form into little bars, but it's like, is that like a quarter cup? Is it two tablespoons worth? Like how much mixture? Cause otherwise it feels like I've got to do all the math myself. Where if you've already made this, you can help me out a little bit. But even to say like, but even to say make it like the size of a golf ball, make it the size of two, just give me something to give me a contextual point of reference. I know. I know she's holding them, but I don't know how big her hands are. Okay, because I'm a nerd, I did, I added some math to it. So it was 504 grams for the whole mixture. So divided by 12, that's 42 which is roughly like three tablespoons, I think. This is an eighth of a cup. So I talk nerdy to me. Oh, so I just measured this down. Oh. And I, that's three tablespoons, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's how we roll. So it's roughly three tablespoons or like a heaping eighth of a cup, but 40 or 42 grams. Hi, welcome back to the cooking show. And then we melt some chocolate. And then you, so you make like the little ball of these things with everything else, put them in the freezer, you melt the chocolate and you dip them in. So that's what it does. Um, so as you can see, there's a big difference between the Butterfingers you start dipping with and the ones you end with, because it, the amount she tells you for chocolate runs out by the end. You gotta stretch it pretty thin. Maybe one tablespoon of coconut oil. It would just help thin it out a little bit more and make it smoother and spread a bit better, I think. Oh my gosh, who pooped on the tray? I did. Annie. You guys are being mean. It does look like a lot like poop. Who wants poop? Me! Me! Well, what do you think? Tastes like one, but it's a bit too chocolatey. Yeah, we needed to find a way to make the chocolate thin, thin spreader. But it has a great texture, has a great flavor. It's good. It's really good. Right. Okay. Really good. Wow, yeah. That's really good. Peanut buttery, crunchy, chocolatey. I get better than that. Butterfinger was my favorite chocolate bar as a kid, so this has got a lot to live up to in my brain. Oh my God, I just had like an experience. This is so good. It makes me feel like I shouldn't eat it. <laughs> That's how good it is. But I know there's only, there's a fair amount of chocolate on there, but it's a lot healthier than the actual chocolate bar would be. Holy cow. This brings me right back to my childhood. I'm, I'm kind of sad that I know how to make this now because I'm probably gonna make this way more than I should. So how many times have you gone to make a dessert and it calls for non-dairy milk and you go to the cupboard and realize that you have run out? I used to have that problem all the time until we got our milky plant. Not only can we now make plant milk at a moment's notice, we can make any kind that we want. But that's not even my favorite thing about this machine. My favorite thing about this machine is just how eco-friendly it is. It cuts down on all the unnecessary packaging, the shipping of containers, all the things and you get to control exactly what goes into your milk. And honestly, it's really just the nut or the seed or the oat or whatever it is you're using and water. You want to throw a date in there to sweeten it up? A little cocoa powder, some cinnamon, go nuts. Honestly, the possibilities for how to use this machine are kind of sort of endless within some a realm. You know, it's not, it's not going to make you soup. I don't know though. I've never tried to make soup in it. Don't try to make soup in it. But seriously, just the idea of being able to make whatever kind of plant milk you want is kind of like a game changer for me. I have discovered through using this machine that pumpkin seed is my favorite. And I don't know if I ever would have known that without using this machine, because I don't know where you could buy pumpkin seed milk in most places. And thanks to the fine folks at Milky Plant, we have a special discount code in the link in the description down below. So you can get a deal on this really awesome machine that is already gonna save you a lot of money over time. 
All right, all right, back to the desserts. I'm gonna make crust-free pumpkin pie. The curious thing about this is it asks you to choke, choke. Don't choke on chia seeds. I mean, you could, because they're thick. It just says to soak three tablespoons of chia seeds to three tablespoons of water. It usually has a three to one ratio, making it pretty thick. Really, it's just blending all this stuff together in a blender. I mean, that's pretty good. The ground up. My wife's going through my old toys because she's selling them. I'm just giving them away, actually. Honestly. What? Bye! Does anyone know who this guy is? Pick it up. I think he's a knockoff of something. I don't know. Anyway, let's try my pumpkin no, pie. No, he's Mattel. Ooh, try that. Don't put that back in the blender. I licked it. No. People will be disgusted. We're going to bake it now. His name is T-Wolf. Hi, T-Wolf. You're going into the happy home of other kids. Some little kid would be very happy to have tea wolf. This is the part I hate the most, is because it's like impossible to get it all out of the blender. And then baking it. Let's see how this turns out. It's crustless pumpkin pie. And? It tastes like pumpkin pie. Do you like pumpkin pie? Thanks. Great talk. Boy? I don't want this fork. Do you mean to fork? I'm sorry. That's a weird way to say please. Please. Where's the crust? It's called a crustless pumpkin pie. Not stupid. Well. Do you miss the crust? Yeah. But how is it otherwise? It tastes like pie pumpkin pie because it's really pretty easy to make pumpkin pie. But this is without any sugar. Dates. Yeah, it's a healthier pumpkin pie. So you're Still, saying it's just as good as regular pumpkin pie? A little bit worse. <laughs> and also you don't have ice cream and there's no crust, so it's worst. I hate crust. I love it. So this is your ideal pumpkin pie? Mm-hmm. Tastes a bit like gingerbread. Tastes like molasses. I'm a big lover of pumpkin pie, so this is my jam. This is really, really good. And even's crazy. I don't miss the crust. I'm a filling person. This is so good. I would eat this a lot. This is an A plus 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 for me. I'm gonna make a fruit cobbler for dessert in the slow cooker. This is normally something we just make really quickly, but since we're trying out a slow cooker recipe, why not? I'm using Instant Pot for my slow cooker for all of these recipes. I don't use that setting a lot, so I don't know if it runs really hot, really cold. So uh, I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle with it, assuming that will work out just fine. Let's do it. So this recipe, I'm gonna pretty much follow along what it asked me to do. I don't have any fresh lemons, unfortunately. I'm going to the grocery store in a few minutes, but I don't want this to, I don't want to do this later because it might not have enough time to cook. So I won't have the fresh lemon zest to put in and I'll be using bottled lemon juice, which is not my ideal. So the instructions I realized just said to just core and peel the apples. They didn't say anything about cutting them up. That seems like a mistake. Also, I didn't peel them because I like the skin on. It's got some nutrients in there. It's good for you. Some people don't like warm fruit. I feel sad for those people. Do you not like warm fruit? Let me know in the comments below if you're like a warm fruit person or not. Some people don't like pies. My people are pie people. Are you my people? Much, much, much later. So the berries and things have been in the Instant Pot now for seven and a half hours. I don't want to check them yet, but we'll check them in a second because I'm going to make the biscuit, the topping. And we're going to make it gluten-free. So we're going to use a combination of gluten-free flour. It says oat bran, which I don't have. So I think I'm just gonna use rolled oats because I think it'll give us some texture. I think that'd be fine. And for the sugar, I'm gonna use maple syrup. And instead of oil of oil, oil of oil, 
all of when I use applesauce. And because I didn't have the lemon zest earlier to put into the liquid, the liquid, the berry mixture, I'm gonna put some in the uh, biscuit. I think that'd be nice. I think I up. I think I was supposed to add more of like a ground up oats to this. She's the one that said I up. I did not say that. She said it in a loving way. It was At least now I'm on camera, I can continue grading. Keep grading. Oh, you, she was worried about the sound. She, now, she, this is a woman who, oh, oh my God. What? This is Excuse a per, me? this is a person. I'm a person. This is true. This is a person. I am a woman also. I don't know why that was so bad. I don't know why. It just said, I mean, I, I felt like it was really aggressive. It was the way you said it. It was. I didn't like it. I was really upset with myself. Anyway, this is a person who understands uh, video production that she's like, the sound has to have context, like like the sink right now. Woo. This is what you get when you when you watch this channel. So uh, I just don't want to keep on adding flour to this thing and making it doughier. I think I'm just gonna put it in plops on top, which is kind of how you would do a fruit glump, a fruit glump, a fruit grunt, or a fruit slump, and then cook it inside the rest. So I uh, will see. This could not work out well. It's gonna taste okay though, so we'll see. All right, let's see how this looks in here. Uh, looks the same as when I put it in this morning. How are they still crunchy and sweet in for seven hours? I mean, they're not. They're kind of chalk. <laughs> seven hours! And they're still crunchy. It tastes good. It tastes good. So I'm just gonna, it says not to crank up a slow cooker to high. I could have made this in like half an hour. I know, that's the problem with this recipe, is even if it tastes good, it's like, this is something we can do on the stove top or in the Instant Pot. Why in you do this? It sounds like they needed a dessert so recipe. It tastes really good, so maybe that's why you do it. Yeah, because the flavors soak in. Yeah. And this is probably, this is not the way I'm supposed to do it. I'm sure it's just to roll it out, but look at this. No one's rolling that out. It's also too, this is, I, I don't even know how to do this. Oh, I know what to do. He knows what to do. Okay, find the tool. Like it is. Huh? Bloop. Even if this is too raw and a little weird inside, it's vegan. So, no one's gonna get sick. This is like a pretty watery, goopy mix, which means that it didn't get thick. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. I got ice cream. I don't really think it's gonna go well with the ice cream. Yeah. From a technical point of view, this is definitely a failure. Maybe it tastes good. It's really good. It's pretty sweet. I like the ice cream. <laughs> the dough has a really nice lemon. Mm. Does it have lemon in it? Yeah, I added that. Yeah, the dough the needs lemon. to be sweeter. I like the dough because the fruit is very sweet. Same reason. Yeah. How would the dough work? Because I didn't wasn't sure it was gonna work. It's so good. I really like this dessert. It's weird that it took all day to make. I'm not very strange, but it's tasty. I like it. Oh, it's really good. He thinks it's really good. It's different than what I was expecting. The dough is soft. That said, there's no reason you couldn't make a dessert like this in half an hour. If you want to see our regular recipe on how to make this kind of thing quicker, let me know in the comments below and we'll do that. I'm going to make these cookies. Uh, I'm going to pronounce them really wrong. It's Peppark Kakor? Pep. Peppark Kakor. Peppark. Peppark. I'm so sorry. It's a crispy Swedish ginger cookie. This looks fun. Uh, and I don't know if you need to change anything here. I'm looking forward to this one. The name of this cookie? Pepper Kakor. Pepper Kakor. Pepper Kakor. I didn't see the pepper part, which makes sense because there's pepper in it. You're smarter than me. Yeah. It's true. We're well, stealing a bite of the cookie. These are so good. These taste like so when I was a kid, they were Peak Green's cookie company made these ginger snaps. And I haven't had one in years, and I don't even know if they make them anymore. This is what they taste like. It's got they weren't burnt on a bun. Well, it's just a couple of them are burnt. Let's hear it crisp. Let's look for it. Oh my god, they're so crunchy. But are they burnt on the bottom? 
Mm, they're a little dark. I think next time we should do it a little bit less. Listen to Chris. Yeah. Oh, sh those are good. You know what the secret is? Black pepper. Mmm, yeah. That makes sense now. This is like my new favorite cookie. Oh, hell, Gringo. Hell, Gringo. It's got ginger. We said. Uh, I can see myself getting Hello. addicted to this kind of thing. So for dinner tonight, we're gonna make Does apple. Dinner? Oh, yeah, thank you. It's the best dinner ever. For it would be the best dinner ever. We're making apple nachos, but the kids had the great idea of making like an apple nacho bar, so we can all put our yeah, different toppings on. It was my great idea. Should I do bananas? It was my great uh, idea. No, but I mean, if you want bananas, I'm not, I wouldn't put bananas on mine. It was my great idea. No, yeah. it wasn't even about okay. So we have the peanut sauce and the chocolate sauce from the book. We're gonna add some strawberries. No. Stop We're gonna add it. a woolly. Stop. Stay. Stay Are you chocolate. eating all the chocolate? No. No, I would never do that. This crunchy oh, yeah. stuff. Uh, I need to cut out some cashews. What else do you guys want to I want to taste the crunchy bit. What else? I think that's it. I'll let you know if we yeah, had anything else. Can you stop it? So uh, one thing I forgot to mention is how to make the chocolate sauce. You literally just take non-dairy chocolate chips and you put them in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time and you stir them around. And hopefully they don't turn out chunky. Yeah, you just gotta heat, we'll just add more heat, just heat them back up. Hopefully they don't turn out chunky. And then same, we took an all natural peanut butter and we just heated it up in the microwave for 20 seconds at a time until it was nice and creamy. She loves chocolate. Were you gonna lick that off and until I, I, no. You were gonna lick Why that would I do that? And, and why and and you guys were saying that I had a lot of tastes like an apple with stuff on it. What's that? Tastes like an apple with stuff on it. Breaking news from Ephraim. Well, that is what it is. But what does it taste? It is what it is. Do you like the it? idea? Yeah. I love the idea. We should put ice cream on them. I haven't even tried mine yet. I already know this is going to be a recipe that we're going to have more often. Dad, you want to look at mine now? But let's see, mommy's. Mm -hmm. What are you? Oh, look at yours. Coconut. <laughs> Annie's got hers there. And that's what's left of baby bears. Okay, ready? I'm gonna take a bite. Cheers. Cheers, big ears. Okay. The apple is just one with many flavors. And the apple, we the apples we just picked off a tree, like a week or two ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they've been in a fridge, like, in a good fridge. <laughs> I don't think it's that really. There's. <laughs> <laughs> we just it off. Ah, that's the stupidest thing I've ever said. Wait, if you've ever like dipped. An apple and peanut butter. It's like that, but like with sweet. Uh, you could do it as a dessert. You could do it as an after school snack and just take out. You can do it as Make breakfast. it as healthy or as sugary as you want. You do that as a breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dad, do you want this for breakfast tomorrow? Dinner? I don't know. I gotta try this right now. I haven't tried it yet. This is really yeah. good. You could do this for a kid's birthday party. Yeah. If you wanted a really healthy option. You can do this for anything. Yeah, I like the crisp of this. The berries were inspired. Is that Annie's idea? Mm -hmm. You gonna spank me, girl, right now? You gonna spank me? Do it. We gotta go. So it's Mother's Day here, and I'm gonna make this hot fudge pudding cake for dessert. This looks really fun. I'm pretty much gonna make it as is. I'm gonna use gluten-free flour, so we'll see how that turns out. And for the second layer, it calls for a cup of white brown sugar. Not gonna do that. Probably gonna cut that in half and use coconut sugar. Otherwise, instead of granulated sugar, I'll probably use coconut sugar. And when you realize you put it into way too small a bowl, transfer it over to a bigger bowl. So then you have room for mixing. Oh, and it calls for a quarter cup of coconut oil. So that will either become aquafaba or applesauce. This should be fun. It, it's bonkers. It's so like you put all the dry ingredients together and then you add the wet, but there's a second layer where you just sprinkle some stuff on top and then you add boiling water to the very top and you cook it. I mean, it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, but this could be a disaster. I'm really excited to try this. Here comes the part that doesn't make any sense. All right, I'm, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised by this. Don't mind the basketball in the background. I was just testing it, Mom! 
All right, so we're gonna add some ice cream to this and serve it up. I'm trying it. It's good. Like, like, hang on, I'm very sweet. Tastes like a brownie? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, really good yeah. Mm -hmm. Some chocolate. Ooh. It's like a cookie I got from Subway once. Because it's kind of a weird consistency. It's supposed to have a weird consistency. No, but it's like it's like not melty, but it's like kind of like jello-y. Oh my goodness, you've never had molten lava cake. Um, I like pudding cracking. It's like a pudding, but better than pudding. Thanks for watching our dessert compilation. If you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments down below. If you want a part two, let us know that. Or if you want some other kind of compilation video of the cookbook reviews we've done here on the channel. Lots of options. Breakfasts, desserts, recipes that only Wooly and I liked, recipes that both the kids liked. You let me know what you'd like to see and I can probably put that together for you. Obviously hit that like button to let YouTube know to share this with other people and subscribe to get more videos like this and stick around because YouTube wants you to watch this one next. And you know what? They got a good tracker with this thing. They, they, they know what you like.